Matthew 13. And uh, we'll continue our study in the book of Matthew, chapter number 13, as we study the parables of the kingdom. Seven parables there of the kingdom in Matthew 13. And uh, we've dealt with four of these parables. We've dealt with the wheat, or excuse me, the sower. Uh, a, a, a man went out and sowed seed in his field. Some fell by the wayside, some on stony ground, some the thorns came up, some fell on good ground, so on and so forth. And then the second parable, we talked about the wheat and the tares. And uh, we talked about that. And then we talked about uh, the mustard seed and those birds lodging in the, uh, the tree of the mustard seed there. And then the fourth one, we talked about that woman in the kitchen. Now, if you missed last Wednesday night, you need to get the DVD and the CD of last Wednesday night about that woman in the kitchen. Now, some of the ladies, they hadn't spoke to me since. Uh, but uh, they were all, it, 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 we, we joked about it a little bit. And uh, that, that lady there in Matthew 13 is uh, what uh, the, the, a bad uh, example of what a woman uh, should be. And so we saw that last Wednesday night. And then tonight we're going to look at the hidden treasure uh, in Matthew 13, verse 44. Only one verse, but there's a lot in there. Verse 44 of Matthew 13. Here's the fifth parable. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. And notice what it says there in 44, the kingdom of heaven. Now, we understand what that is. By now, I hope you do, you understand the kingdom of heaven is that Jewish kingdom going to be set up one of these days in Jerusalem, going to rule and reign. Jesus Christ is going to rule and reign. After he comes the second coming, he's going to rule and reign for a thousand years. That's the kingdom of heaven and what the Bible calls the kingdom of heaven. And so he gives these mysteries of the kingdom uh, of what's going to go on. And uh, so the kingdom of heaven, that thousand year millennial reign, is like unto treasure, uh, which uh, it hid in a field. And when the man hath found it, he hideth it for joy, he goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field. Uh, now, before we do anything else, let's go to the Lord in word of prayer. Heavenly Father, I ask you to help us. Now, tonight, you help us, Lord, uh, clear our thoughts and our minds so we can give the people that that uh, is in here. And Lord, help us to say those things which we need to say and not say those things which we don't need to say. And Lord, give us that that will help the people the most and encourage us in this midweek service. We need a little something to get us through the rest of the week. Get us till Sunday. Or get us till you come back, whichever comes first. And Lord, I pray uh, you'd help us and do that tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, I do want you to point, uh, point this out. Look at verse 1 of chapter 13. Look at ch uh, verse 1 of chapter 13. And I want you to look at this. The same day went Jesus out of the house. You see that? He went out of the house and sat by the seaside. A great multitude was gathered together unto him. And so what he did, he went in, in a ship there, turned around and faced the crowd. They were standing on the seaside and he spoke to them, everybody. And he spoke four parables to them outside in front of everybody. Those first four parables have to do with the devil getting into and postponing this kingdom. The first four parables. What? The sower went and sowed seed in his field. Some by the wayside. Hey, and all that kind of stuff. Uh, the, it, wheat and the tares. The devil comes, sows tares among the wheat. And then three, the devil has them birds. He has birds everywhere. And they're birds and they flock in that tree and they, they disrupt everything. And then in the last week, uh, the devil has done got in the kitchen and he's hiding that meal and, and, and or hiding that leaven in the meal and he's messing everything up. The first four parables, he's speaking to everybody on the seashore outside saying, Hey, beware, the devil is trying to mess this thing up. Then, look at verse 36. Very, very important now. After he's done, uh, had the four parables, 
Verse 36, Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went where? Into the house. And his disciples came unto him, saying, declaring this parable of terrors and of the feet. Notice the first four parables outside in front of everybody. Then he goes inside the house, and he only takes his disciples with him, and he gives him the rest of the parables. And the rest of the parables are going to tell the disciples privately, hey, Guys, you know them first four parables I told, I told the people about? About the devil going to come and the king was going to be postponed? Well, I tell you what. Let me tell you guys something. Don't be dismayed. Don't be disheartened. Don't you worry about a thing. What I promised to your father Abraham, you will get. If it takes me selling everything I've got, if it takes me selling everything I got to get the whole field, to get the treasure that's hidden in the field, I'll do just that. If it takes me selling everything I got to get the pearl of great price, the nation of Israel, I'll do what it takes to make sure the promises are given to Israel in that day. Don't you worry about it, fellas. Well, that may not encourage you much on a Wednesday night, but God will do what He said He'll do. And he took them inside the house, says, guys, I know you just heard them four parables about the devil getting everything, every four, all four parables about the devil. The devil, the devil, the devil. I got something, I got news for you. I got good news for you. Come on in the house, let me tell you about it. All right, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure. All right, let's first, let's first do this, because this one is an easy one. Hid the tre uh, 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 like unto treasure, hid in a field. All right, let's first, let's skip the treasure for a minute. Let's go to the field. The field is very easy. Now, you, to, to, to figure out what the field is, you have to know Greek and Hebrew. You have to be a graduate of some Bible college. And you've got to be real smart. I mean, you've got to really, really know your stuff to figure out what the field is. Look at verse 38. The field is the what? That Bible is just wonderful, ain't it? The field is the world. We got that down, Pat. That's easy. All right, now let's look at this treasure. We got to figure out who the treasure is. Well, if you want to find out who the treasure is, then you go to other places. This is how you do it. Folks, listen. You're not going to get this at most places. So listen to me. This is how you study your Bible. Don't pick up, don't, don't do this. In your Bible study, I usually don't do this on Wednesday night, but don't do this. When you pick up and say, okay, I want to try to figure out, uh, let me figure out what the treasure is. So you go to your bookcase and pick out a J. Vernon McGee commentary. J. Vernon McGee's fine. I, I'm, not, I'm not knocking that. He's fine if you want to read after whatever. Don't go to your commentary and go, well, I want to see what John Gill says about the treasure. Don't go to the commentaries first. Go to the Bible first. Then if you want to go to the commentaries, see what everybody else says about it, that's fine. But that's not the first thing you do. Let me give you this little hint. The Bible is the best commentary on the Bible. So, if you want to know who the treasure is, well, then I tell you what. Let's look at Psalm 135. Let's look at Psalm 130. Hold your place. We're coming back. We've got to figure out who the treasure is. Psalm 135. Now, if you were from up north, it wouldn't be 135. It would be 135. <laughs> Psalm 135, verse number 4. For the Lord hath chosen who? Now, do you know who Jacob... You know who another name for Jacob is? Anybody take a wild guess? You don't remember Jacob fought with the angel of the Lord till the break of day and he changed Jacob's name to Israel. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself. Well, guess, look ye there. It defines it for us. And who? Israel for his what? Peculiar what? 
Well, I'll cut off my legs and call me shorty. <laughs> Who is the treasure? Israel. Well, maybe you don't, maybe you ain't ready to believe that yet. Okay. Look at Exodus 19. Exodus 19. Now, there's other places, but I don't have time to go to all of them. You just have to get your concordance and look up the word treasure and just go to town. Exodus 19 and verse number 5. 19 and verse 5. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall have a peculiar what? Treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. He says above all people. Talking about the nation of Israel, he called them a peculiar treasure. Treasure. In Malachi chapter number 4, I believe it is. Well, you don't have to turn there, but here's another reference real quickly. Malachi chapter number 4, and the latter part of, ver- of chapter 4, he says God one day is going to come and gather together his jewels unto him. Well, all right, let me tell you this. Uh, would, you, would you remember a fellow by the name of Aaron? Uh, Moses and Aaron. Aaron is the first high priest. God gives them the order. And he says the high priest is to wear a breastplate right here. And it's supposed to, it's it's one of them things where um, it it hangs on both sides here. And it's got a little strap right here, hangs over your shoulder. You put it over your head like this and and part of it hangs right. And there's there's four rows of three of those stones. It makes 12 stones right there on the breastplate. And uh, those 12 stones are representatives of, take a wild guess, the nation of Israel. It starts with Reuben, and here's the first stone, and ends with Benjamin. All the way, all 12 of them. You won't believe this one. And on the shoulder, right there and right there, this thing is held together on the shoulder by two jewels. Right here, right here. And both of these have the, all the names of 12 tribes of Israel. You know what God's trying to say? God says, Israel, I'm holding you up on my shoulders. And you are my treasure. And the reason I'm showing you you are my treasure, I hold you close to my heart. All right, go back to Matthew 13. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, all right, let's, let's uh, see if we can get this right. Verse 44, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, which is the nation of Israel. Has everybody agree on, agree on that? Hid in a field, hid in the world. So we got the nation of Israel hid in the world. You with me? We're, 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 it is pretty easy. The which, when a man hath found, look at here. Hey, anybody take a wild guess? All right, back up. We got the nation of Israel hid in the world. I got to find a treasure. Oh, here's a baby bottle. Here's a baby bottle. This nation of Israel started. What is it? Somebody help me. Genesis chapter number 12. He called Abraham out of the early Chaldees. Guess what? They were doing everything he said. And then they start disobeying God. And they went into captivity. First Babylonian captivity. Then the Medes and the Persians. Then the Greeks. And then the Romans. You with me? While they were in captivity, God hid them in the world. Hid in the world. Malachi chapter 4 says they've been hid and they're in captivity. Malachi chapter 4 and then 400 years of silence between Malachi and Matthew. You with me? Then in Matthew chapter number 2 and Luke chapter number 2, a man shows up. Take a wild guess who the man is. Uh, Let me give you a hint. He was born in Bethlehem by a virgin. Hallelujah. He came into his own and his own received him not. So, 
The Lord Jesus Christ comes on the scene. There you are. A man goes and finds treasure hid in the field. And while Jesus walked upon this earth, John the Baptist says, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And Jesus says, This is my treasure. This right here is who I love. These are my people. These are my people. And guess what the treasure did? The treasure looked at him and said, We don't want you. They crucify him on the cross. Well, guess what he does? Kingdom of heaven is like under treasure, hid in the field, hid in the world. Then, which when a man hath found, he found it when he was born, he came to this earth, he found it. What does he do? He hides it again. He hides it. When they rejected him and said, we have no king but Caesar. Now, let me ask you a question. All right. If you had treasure, I don't have any. But if you had some, if you had some, like some of you got, I know some of you got it buried in your backyard. I know you. Some of you got some treasure. If you were going to hide it, that does not mean you're done with it. That means you're just putting it in the bank, you're hiding it away for future use. So don't let no, listen, I started to say don't let no. That's double negative and that's improper English. But when you're watching these crazy TV preachers, don't you let one of them say, God's done with the nation of Israel. All Jesus did was, when they rejected him, he went back over here and said, y'all hide out right there. He hid it. Did y'all know the nation of Israel right now is in time out? They're still God's chosen people. They're hid. If you, want, if you don't believe they're hid, you'll have to read uh, uh, Romans chapter 9, Romans chapter 10, and Romans chapter 11. Romans chapter 11 verse 25 says, Blindness in part has happened to Israel. Them guys over there, they're walking around with their eyes closed. They're in darkness. They're, their nose is in the corner. God says, okay, you're in time out. Go stick your nose in the corner. I'll tell you when time out's up. You rejected the only begotten son. Go stick your nose in the corner. You're still my kid, but we're, we're, not, you're, we're, we're not using... The emphasis is not on you right now. So, he goes and he hideth. Now, comma, and for joy thereof, goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Well, I'm about to get excited. Jesus Christ walks up on this earth. He finds a treasure. He says, here it is. They say, no, we're not going, we, no, we reject that with the kingdom. We reject it. We have no king but Caesar. Jesus, you're not our king. You were born in the stable. We're looking for somebody that was born in a whole lot better place than a stable. So God says, y'all don't know what you're doing. But just for future reference, I'm going to hide you. I'm going to hide you back in the field until for future reference. Then, what does Jesus do? He goes to the cross, sells all. He's <laughs> Somebody help me now. You, you understand, he hid the nation of Israel in the world. Then he says, well, just so make sure I got the whole deal. I'm going to buy the whole world that the treasure's hid in. Somebody help me on a Wednesday night. So he goes to the cross and dies, sells all that he had. And he's not buying the treasure. The treasure's already hid. He goes and buys the whole world that the treasure's hid in. Hallelujah. And then, <laughs> hallelujah, for the joy. You say, preacher, I ain't got that in yet. Okay, for the joy. You see that for the joy? You see for the joy? All right. 
turn to Hebrews 12. Real quick. Hebrews 12. We're almost done. No amens, please. Hebrews. I'm so excited I can't find Hebrews. Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. All right. Verse number 2. Everybody with me. Hebrews 12 and verse 2. Everybody there? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Who? For the what? For the joy that was set before him endured the what? Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Matthew 13 says, he went and hid treasure in the field, the world. Then he went and sold everything that he had. He bankrupt heaven to buy the whole field that the treasures hid in. And then, for the joy, endured the cross. And now he's seated at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for me and for you. All right, now we know what John 3.16 means now. For God so loved... God so loved the field. God so loved the world that He gave, that He sold everything that He had. And gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever, if you're a treasure, if you're the nation of Israel, if you're a Gentile, if you're the church of God, it don't make any difference. Whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Look at 1 John real quick. 1 John. Let's drive this home real quick. 1 John. Two. First John two. First John two, verse one. Now, this is probably a little too dispensational for some of you, maybe. But you see that verse first three words, my little children? 1 John chapter 2, John is a Jew. He's writing to his little Jewish children. My little Jewish children, these things write I unto you that you sin not. I don't want you to sin. And if any man sin, because we're going to, we have an advocate, a lawyer, we have a troubleshooter, we have somebody to go between us, we have an advocate with the Father who? Jesus Christ the righteous. Has everybody got that? Verse 2. And He is the propitiation. For He is the substitute. He is the propitiation for our... He's talking about the little children. My little children. He's the propitiation for the Jews' sins. And not for the Jews only, but for also for the... Somebody help me. John said, (laughs) He is the substitute for the sins of the treasure. But not for them only. (laughs) Not for them only. But the sins of the whole world, the whole field that the treasures hid in. Hallelujah. Now, you say, preacher, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen, and I'm done. The nation of Israel is hid in God right now. They don't understand. They're in blind, they're blindness. Uh, Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Doesn't quote it to you. Blindness in part has happened to the nation of Israel. They're in time out, people. During the church age. We are living in the church age. One of these days, the rapture is going to take place. The church is leaving. 
Now let me help some of you. Some of you, good night, read your Bible. When I say he's coming after the church, he's not coming for after a building. He's not coming after a pulpit or a piano. Come on, people, broaden your horizons, read the Bible. He's not coming after the Baptist name. He's coming after the church, which is his body. And if you're saved, you were placed into the body by the Holy Spirit of God, not by some preacher putting you in water somewhere. I just had to get that off my chest. But he's coming after the church. And when the church leaves, Jesus goes over here and says, You're not in time out no more. Time in. <laughs> and through the seven year tribulation, the nation of Israel is going to be the focal point. And then it's the second coming. Hallelujah. He's coming back. The kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in the field. He's coming back in that second coming. And he's coming back with a bride. You say, well, preacher, man, that treasure, I'd rather be the treasure. Just wait till the millennial. You had rather be the bride. The treasure's good. Hallelujah. That's good. You just wait till you see the bride. <laughs> Matthew 13, I'm done. I know I said that a while ago, but we learned that in seminary. You just say that over and over, and people, you got. After, every time you say that, you got about ten minutes before you lose them again. You say, oh, this and I'm done. People perk up for about ten minutes. Verse 44. You with me? Again. The thousand year millennial reign, the kingdom of heaven, is like unto the nation of Israel. <coughs> hid in the world. When Jesus Christ came to this world and found it. They rejected him, and he hideth it again. And for the joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and endured the cross, despised the shame, and was crucified on the cross, and bought the whole field. Amen. Now that right there is the mystery of the hidden treasure. Hallelujah. I love it. 